And so one of the great things that we've learned is in the process of doing this, we're going to continue to, to uh, take your testimonies because your testimonies, man, your testimonies, your stories, that's what matters. And, and, and in the middle of this time, as we, as we come to a close in this series, I just want to keep in front of you the reason that we're doing, the reason that we're doing this, the reason that we're in a campaign, the reason that we're even doing this series in the first place is because we know that there are more testimonies that haven't been gone after yet. And we're going to go after those and we're going to get those. And so before I get too carried away and start preaching, I'm ready, but how about our girls basketball team going to state? Yes. If y'all weren't there, whew. Old Mason Jones was making it rain three points. <laughs> it was, uh, man, they, oof, these girls were tough. It was awesome. So it was a, just, a, just a great weekend, a good time to go down and celebrate, celebrate them. So today, today we come together. We come together to celebrate this day, and we're going to, today is going to be Commitment Sunday. This is the day. I want you to hear me say this. This is the day that we will look back on and say, praise you, God, for what you did. Thank you, God, that you let me be, get to be a part of it. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, and, and we've learned this. I'll get into it in a little bit more. We've learned this by looking back a little bit, that this is going to be a day that we're going to look back on and we're going to go, thank you, Father, for what you did. Up till this week, the last three weeks, including today, we've, we've looked at the vision for the river. We've talked about what God wants to do. And, and church, I want to hear you. I want you to hear me. I'm telling you, but I am making declaration. You know, the scripture gives us authority to declare things that aren't as though they are. And, and as we begin to see that, the first stages are to speak that, to walk in that, and you, you see God move. So here's some of the things that we are declaring as we come through this, as we've come through this Commitment Sunday. The Lord is going to use us to reach the unsaved and the unchurched all around us. In every, every community that's, that's, in, that's represented here, the Lord's going to use us to reach those people around us who are un unsaved first and foremost and unchurched. The Lord is going to use us to provide a children's home. The Lord is going to use us to be instrumental in a retirement home. The Lord is going to use us to provide uh, us with a set of apartments or housing somehow to help families that aren't on their feet get on their feet and develop their testimony. The, Lord, the Lord is going to use us to reach Nicaragua. The Lord is going to use us to continue and even further to bless the communities around us. He's going to. The community around us will, the day will soon come when all the community around us, whether they're involved or not, will celebrate what God's doing here. The Lord's going to make sure that that happens. And so we've looked at scriptures. So just as a reminder, we looked at scriptures and we saw scripturally how Israel built the temple from their hearts. That's where it came from. We saw that he gave us his talents to use and not to bury. He, he gave us, he invested his talents in us. And he wants us to use those. When you study that passage of scripture of the talents that we talked about a few weeks ago, when it says that they use the talents, the word, the original word there for use is, is this. They occupied the talents. Or they did business with. To do business with something means to occupy it. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's something that the Lord desperately wants us to understand. Why is that? because then we saw the next week that he has called every one of us to bear fruit how much fruit more that's what he said in front of us to bear fruit 
and to bear more of it. We've seen that God has called us to be stewards and not owners. We've seen that God has called us to sacrifice and surrender. He has called us to a place where He wants us to sacrifice and surrender. And let me, I just, at, at this point, I got to tell you that this week, I had, a, I had a sharp encounter with God based on an encounter that I had last week with Cinda. Last week, as we've been going through this spiritual journey and praying about God, what is it that you want Mark and Cinda to do? I came up with what I, what I felt like. Uh, I, I can't tell you I felt like God had impressed it on me. I just, I felt, I came up with something that I felt good about. And I, the more I thought about it, the better I felt about it. And I thought... Man, this is, this is, this is the right thing. This is, and I, I thought this is probably going to freak Cinda out a little bit, but, but I feel good about it. This is what he's called us to do. And so, as we, as we were in this spiritual journey and coming close to the end of it, I told her, I said, "Okay, have you heard God?" And she's kind of looking at me like, "Have you?" And I said, "I have." And I, I'm going to tell you, so you might want to sit down, because I was thoroughly impressed with what I had felt like God was telling me to do and I told her and she looked at me with this really weird look and I and she said well that's not what I got and I said well I figured she was going to be way below because I was being godly and she said well the Lord put exactly double that on my heart I was like no I don't think that was the So I carried that for several days and went back into to my office this week and was studying with studying it. And I just want to tell you, uh, if you ever feel any separation between you and I, I don't. I'm in this, I'm in this fighting it out with you. And I was sitting in my office and and the first guy that usually gets punched in the face by the words that come off of the stage are me. And I heard the Lord say, is, is what you said what I told you to do or is what you said what you told the church not to do you told the church it's not, don't ask God what can I afford to do ask God what can I do and I felt like the Lord was showing me you, you told me something that you could afford to do without causing any, any change relatively easy what you could afford and is that what you want is that what you want and so I wrestled with this and so I was like, okay, God and Cinda, can we meet in the middle or something, you know? And so we, we, were, we wrestled with this. Hear me. Listen to me. I'm saying this to you. For you, for me. He's calling us to a place of surrender and sacrifice. Not to do something to us or, or to get something from us. He's calling us to this to do something for us. In, in what God wants to do, your betterment is always on the forefront of His mind. Your betterment. He always has a plan for you. And so this is, this is going down. Our story is being written by the combining of our hearts. By the combining of your heart and my heart, the Lord is writing our story right now. It is not going to be easy. It is going to require a lot from all of us realizing that we're talking about sacrifice and surrender again not i not listen to me i'm just telling you my i am not saying this to you to beat you with it i'm telling you my struggle i don't want your struggle to be my struggle i, w- I don't want you to even struggle i just want you and the lord to figure out but for me my struggle was not mark what can you afford but mark what am i calling you to what am I calling you to? To this place of sacrifice and surrender. And the reason he's never, church, hear me say this. The reason he's never going to remove sacrifice and surrender from your life, please catch this. Because all it'll do is, is help you, help establish you in life so that you don't have the same struggles. The reason that he'll never remove sacrifice and struggle from our life is because he wants his plans to become our plans. You see, when we get saved, we originally get saved because 
Well, a lot of us, we're just, we don't want to go to hell. We're, we're scared and we don't, we get kind of scared out of that place. And so we get, we, we get into this relationship with God and then he spends the rest of our life changing us and, and moving in us and moving us. The scripture defines it like this, from glory to glory to glory, ever in the, in the image of him. The whole plan is for us to be continually looking more and more and more like him so that the world around us can be drawn to him to the image of him in and through us and listen on our own we will not sacrifice and we will not surrender because left up to our own left up to our own desires we we really like us and so sacrifice and surrender is something he's never going to take off because he wants his plan to become our plan hear me say this this is something that this church has always understood from the very beginning I loved I loved the things that you can find every once in a while I've seen them come out and the things that we can read about the beginnings of this church way back out of a 30-day revival hey I love you and and don't take this wrong but if we bring somebody in to preach three days I'm lucky if I get a day and a half out of you these people had a 30-day revival 30-day revival and out of that was birthed in them this God's doing something that he wants to continue what is this and miracle after miracle and do you know that this room that we're in this building that we're in came about by miracles listen to this I had him look because I wanted to speak of I wanted to to mention this point in my message today so I I had Jeremy check in when when they did their miracle offering for this building to build this gym that, that, that we've turned into our auditorium they did that exactly 30 years ago had no idea had no idea 30 years ago they did a miracle offering and they sat in front of their people, hey, 30 years ago, a $100,000 miracle offering. And you know what they did? They exceeded it. And they built this. And when we look around the room today, and we hear, we hear Patricia's testimony, and we hear Stephen's testimony, we hear Stephanie's testimony, we hear... Cody Lofink's testimony and, and all so many others that are going to happen you think what would have happened if they would have skipped out on that 30 years ago there's coming a day that we're going to look back and go praise you God for doing what you did but it's going to require surrender and sacrifice from us you and I are thank you we're actually being a part right now today we are we are being a part of something that is going to last forever it's going to last you you and i work a job well i guess i can say i because my job's kind of better than yours but <clears throat> most of you work a job that's not going to last forever it's not this thing that we're a part of right now this is going to last forever and this is an incredible thing so here's what I'm asking of you today to be putting in front of God not to be doing because of me today at the end of this message I'm going to have the worship team come up not yet but when I have them come up we're going to do a first fruits offering what's a first fruits offering a first fruits offering is what you say hey I'm I feel like God's called me to be a part of this and and I'm I'm this is what I'm using to initiate this. This is my, this is my beginning of my, my commitment to this church. A first fruits offering is what that is. It's the beginning, the, the first part. Now, after that, we're going to ask you, and you got, you, you all, most, a lot of you brought yours. If not, it was in your bulletin. You got your commitment card. Not me telling you but listen to what God has been telling you. That's been the whole plan of doing this 21-day journey, to hear what God said. And then you fill out this commitment card. And on this commitment card, the one thing I do want to say, so I don't want you to be confused. On this commitment card, the one blank that we didn't put on here, we didn't put a blank for first fruits. But we want to be able to take everything that you put 
into this and we want to be able to account it all first so if you're giving to the first fruits offering just write another line there write first fruits and then put in that what you're giving if God told you to give $50 today as a first fruits offering then write a line first fruits and write $50 there uh, then beside that you're, you're going to fill this out and beside that you can put what you're going to give either monthly bi-weekly or every two weeks annually or weekly or quarterly whatever he's told you to do you write it in there then you write your first fruits in there the total of that is what you're giving to your heart our story and at the end of the service we're going to have you turn in these cards so we're doing a first fruits offering and then we're turning in our commitment cards and here please hear the third one because the third one listen I think we're still um, just waiting a little bit the third thing that I'm asking you to ask God what your role is is how do you involve those people around you in this I, this church is gonna des it's gonna have to grow drastically and in order for us to do these things that we're talking about doing the church has to grow the church is gonna grow by your living testimony affecting people around you so hey I'm not <clears throat> I'm just being honest with you. You can, you can mow grass with your neighbor and you can, you know, throw rocks over the fence at each other or whatever, or drink a beer in the garage with each other, whatever. But do you know about their walk with God? We're, we, we all live in communities that are full of people that are either unchurched or unsaved. First and foremost, I want you to go out and tell them how to accept Jesus Christ as their Savior. But then, after that, I want you to invite them. Listen, listen to me close because this is how I want you to invite them. Don't invite them to come to church with you. Invite them to come be the church with you. The church's body, the church is the body. It's not a building, but this is where we meet. Listen to me. The, the local church, this is the hope of the world. We plug in where we live. We're connected where we live. We come together. It's the whole concept of synergy. You can lift 100. I can lift 100. Together we can lift 300. It's synergy. And it's God. It's God ordained. So I'm asking you to, it, listen, it's time for us to grow. Begin to bring people with you. We're getting ready. We haven't put down the date yet, but we're getting ready. We're, we're talking about it. We're still wrestling with exactly when, but we're going to start that Thursday night service. We're going to do a Thursday night service and a Sunday morning service. It'll be the exact same, except for probably Thursday night, because we're not going to kill our worship team, but on Thursday night, it'll probably be scaled down, maybe more of like an acoustic thing, until we see what God does with it. But we want to do that. Yes, we want to do that to give you options, secondarily, but first and foremost, we want to do that because we want to reach people around us that maybe they don't have the opportunity to come with us on Sunday mornings. So we're going to give them both options. But please hear me. That's on you. You go do the ministry. You go share your faith and bring those people with you. So why, why is it again, why is it that God wants, allows us to come to places of sacrifice like this? Because honestly, truly, <laughs> I'm one of you you don't like listening to preaching about money all the time I don't like preaching on it to be honest except for I know what God wants to do with us for us I know I'm not convinced I mean I'm not struggling with that I'm convinced that he does he does these things for us so God brings us to this place where we can talk about sacrifice over and over honestly do we like it no not yet but I promise you this I promise you this as you engage, that will change in you. Because you'll start becoming, you, you get the thing about God. He wants to consume us with His desires being our desires. Does Jesus, listen, does God, does Jesus have the heart of a giver? God gave His one and only Son so that we might not perish but have everlasting life. Not only is He a giver, but He's the most extravagant giver that the world has ever he gave the world he is the giver on steroids he is the most extravagant giver that there is and so why does God want us to come to these places he wants us to come here 
when we're asked to do something like this to to he has a specific purpose and plan so what is that Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 says this but without faith it is impossible to please him for he who comes to God must believe look two things that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him church the reason he's the reason I know God is in this the reason he's never going to take sacrifice and surrender off of you is because you cannot diligently listen to me close you cannot diligently serve him with just your mouth you just talk a lot of noise if you don't walk what you talk you're not there's nothing diligent about that so he leaves that on us because it's impossible it is not it is not a, a hard thing to just talk the right stuff that doesn't require a lot of faith but to walk it out that requires faith to to do what I don't know how we can do this to stand I mean because I'm with you I'm not I'm not patting me on the back but to stand in front of you look around to stand in front of you and say God's gonna use us to change our community God's gonna use us to provide for children God's gonna use us to provide for elderly people to provide for needy people look around it takes faith for you to sit there and it takes faith for me to stand here but it's one thing to talk about it. it's a whole nother thing to walk it and the reason he's not gonna lift it off is because you investing your heart and me investing my heart is what is what enables us to diligently seek him so James chapter 4 <clears throat> look at James chapter 4 verse 1 it says where do wars and fights come from among you do they not come from look your desire for pleasure that war in your members you lust and you do not have you murder and covet and cannot obtain you fight and war yet you do not have because you do not ask the problem church listen the problem is this the problem is your desires for your pleasures that's the problem I, I'm, I'm just, I'm telling you, I, I'm wrong in a lot of places, but I'm not wrong in this. God wants His desires to become your desires. And He's never going to put you in a place where everyone and everything around you is easy. In fact, if He's got a big plan for your life, He's going to put you in a place just the opposite he's going to put you in difficult circumstances he's going to surround you with difficult people which is why he's given me the staff that he's given me <clears throat> hey you don't you don't put you don't put the scrubs in when the game's on the line We watched this yesterday. We had such a blast yesterday. It was such a long but amazing day. Before the girls' basketball game, when they kicked some tail, we got to go. To, we were at Tech, and we got to watch the Big 12 championship tra indoor track meet. This cat that runs on Texas Tech team ran a 200. For those of you that aren't tracksters, just say wow in a minute. He ran a 200 in 20.03 the fastest 200 in the world we watched it happen yesterday it was spectacular people lost their minds 20.03 he ran this yesterday it was incredible and then a couple races later the girls mile relay well I can say this because hopefully nobody in Lubbock's watching but they got smoked well they got smoked because their superstar in the 200 when she was running it blew a hamstring oh so sad 
this girl's name is Sarah Limp, and I mean, she is limping. Pray for her. No, I mean, she's hurting bad, really. She's hurting. Pray for Sarah. Because, man, there's like stuff on this girl. I mean, pressure and, and God wants to. But she was like the guts of this team. And then the guts of this team right before they ran gets blown out. So that they didn't put a scrub in, but they put another really great girl in. But she wasn't Sarah. And guess what? They got beat. I'm saying I'll let you say this to you. If life's hard, don't miss this. If life is hard for you, it's because of the size of the plan that he has for you. He has a big plan for you, church. And that's why I'm, I'm again, this was my point. I'm right, and you can't wrestle with this part, okay? Just take it. I'm right. He wants his desires to become your desires. And whenever his desires become your desires all of those problems that keep you drowning and struggling will cease to be your problems they will they'll stop being your problems and they'll be the platform that you can stand off of to be successful in life they'll stop being your problems and they'll begin to be your platform when you let his desires become your desires but <clears throat> we struggle because of our desires and then it says this so you lust and people go, oh, I don't lust. What are you talking about lust? I don't lust. Hey, let me, let me be honest with you for a minute, just in the idea of lust. Jesus himself, don't miss this. Jesus himself said, but I say to you that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her. Adultery. This is, this, this passage of scripture isn't even talking about that, but that part involves how many people does that part involve if you've looked at a woman hey youngest to oldest i know that this affects men, uh, women too but I, I just gotta say this you can't say this to the men enough every time you pull up that porn site every time you are committing adultery there's no way around it every time you look at it you can't bypass it you can't make it easy and you don't get a pass you're committing adultery according to the word of my jesus you're not just you're looking at that in lust it's wrong it's wrong but he's talking about in this passage we lust after other things we lust after the things and so he says you can't have these things the your desires and your pleasures unbridled they create lust in you they create murder in you and you would go i haven't ever murdered anybody contraire First John chapter 3 verse 14 says this we know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren not just because I said a prayer sometime yes that's where it starts with but the the way you you, you know how you tell an orange tree by its orange You know how you tell, look at me. You know how you tell a Christian? I love. And that ought to terrify some of us. That ought to terrify some of us. Loving each other is how we know that we've passed from death to, from death to life. And then it closes by this. He who does not love his brother abides in, that means lives in death. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer, watch, has eternal life abiding in him. Hates his brother. You know who Jesus said your brother is? Everyone. Everyone. When, yeah, but you don't understand what they did to me. I, the, guy that, the guy that put all this on paper, we nailed him to a cross. He understands what they did to you. And he said, forgive. 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 He who hates his brother doesn't have the eternal life abiding in him. It's not there. And so, murderer, yeah, we do. Covet, 
It, it says that we covet to get the things that we want. Let me just tell you, this is Mark's definition of covet, uh, which again makes it pretty right, but <clears throat> it's this. To want what someone else has without doing what they did. When you want what someone else has, but you're unwilling to do what they did to get it, that's what it means to covet. Well, I want to... What? Then either let it inspire you, or it causes sin in you. It can inspire you. If you want what someone else has, it can inspire you. Hey, if you want to do... If you want to do a better job at pastoring a church than I do, go pastor a church. If you want to do a better job of, of, of being married than I do, then get married and you better pour your guts into your wife because I'll tell you right now, Mama Fine's getting all I got. I'm all in for that girl. And you better be, you better be ready to, to duel because I'm going to do everything that I possibly can to be the best. So don't be mad at me. Just do the same thing. Let's, let's go together. So coveting is wanting what someone else has without doing what they did. I got to show you this. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, just really quick, I want to read this to you. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6 says this. Now godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world, and it is certain that we can carry nothing out. And watch this, church. And having food and clothing, with these we shall be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and harmful lusts, which drown, watch this, which drowned men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, for, with, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. That, that verse does not say that money's bad. Money's not bad. Money's a great thing. God wants to use money. He wants to, that's why I want you to give so that he can knock the spirit of mammon off of your money and he can put the spirit of the Holy Ghost on it and do more with, more with a smaller amount than you could with all of it. That's what he wants to do. But this says that they, this says destruction and perdition. Let, let me just be clear with you about this. You know what that is? Perdition is this. Here's the definition of perdition. State of final spiritual ruin loss of soul damnation church I'm just going to be honest with you Covet, coveting is a pretty big deal it's a big deal and it's time that we move out of this and then it ends with fighting and war how do you do that you go back up to verse 1 it all comes out of these places in our heart okay look at verse 3 <clears throat> verse 3 James chapter 4 you ask and you do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures. See, he's still back in that first place. Here's our problem. Here's the problem. Hey, being honest with you. And, I, and I, I, I'm telling you, I struggle with it too. But here's the problem why people don't want to hear sermons like this. Why people don't want to go through series like this. Because series like this are invasive to your life series like this when we start talking about getting into your money and your stuff that's the problem as long as you are in the driver's seat as long as it's about you as long as it, all the struggle is you can't get beyond you you still can't get past you that's where the problem is we are though the truth is in our nature we're all about our pleasures so we don't get what we ask for because we ask so that we can spend it amiss on me, myself, and I. Here's the truth. If we would get lost in God's plan for us, there's no end in what He would do for us. He, he, you've heard this story before. We always make, make a joke about it. Ed Young told that he, he bought his kids some Skittles and they were sitting there and he told his kid, give me some Skittles. And the kid goes, no, these are mine looked at him he goes I just bought those 
and he grabbed him out of his kid's hand. He said, let me teach you a lesson. I can make it rain Skittles for the next seven days. If I buy some Skittles, there's a whole lot more. I can go buy all. So if I buy some and I ask you for them, don't hog them. Give them. But Lord, you think the Lord can't make it rain on your circumstances? My gosh, you've got God in a little tiny box. Man, he's much bigger than that. Verse 4. Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever, therefore, wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or why do you think that the Scripture says in vain, the Spirit who dwells in us yearns jealousy, jealously. This verse calls us adulterers and adulteresses. Why does it use such strong terminology? Because he's trying, he wants us to catch this concept. When we're more in love with us in the world than we're taking the world's advice over the advice of God and when we take the world's advice over the advice of God we're committing adultery with the world that's absolutely what this verse says when we do things the way the world tells us to do it as opposed to the way God tells us to do it we're committing adultery with the world that's why he says adulterers and adulteresses church he says the spirit that dwells in you yearns jealously for all of you he doesn't want to live in a small corner he wants the whole thing he wants the whole thing the holy spirit that lives in you wants all of you he wants to take you out of the me seat because that's his seat but you got to be willing to get out of the way you have to be willing to get out of the way for that it says but he but he gives verse 6 but he gives more grace therefore he says God resists the proud but he gives grace to the humble that means we got to get over ourselves and the truth of the matter is when you look at your life the way we live our lives so often when we're not led by the Spirit of God we live it like I'm gonna get mine I'm gonna I'm going to go, I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm, I, all of these things. And when these things are, is it bad to have things? No, it is not bad to have things. You won't be able, oh, I shouldn't even say this, but I'm going to. When you do things God's way, you can't get out of having things. Because he wants more for you than you want for you. You just don't trust him with it. So you think, ah, I trust and we got to get out of the seat, that seat. I'm going to get mine. we got to get out of that. We have to move beyond that. So look at verse 5. No, no, no. Sorry. Verse 7. <clears throat> Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Now look what he says. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament, mourn, and weep. How fun does this sound? Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy be turned to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and He will lift you up. Why is this saying all this sad stuff? Why all this sad stuff? Because listen, church, I'm telling you, why, it's still sad stuff. Why? Because listen, we still get our joy from the things in our life. We still get our pleasure from the things in our life. We still commit adultery on the Lord with the world because we do what the world tells us to do as opposed to what God tells us to do. And because of that, as long as the world is where we draw our joy from, as long as the world is where we draw our life from, the only thing left to say to us is you need to turn your laughing into crying because it's a tragedy what you've let become the God of your life. It's a tragedy what you've let take in control of your life. It's a tragedy. So turn your laughter into mourning. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God so that He can do what, church? So that He can lift you up. He wants to take you higher than you could ever want to take you. He wants to do more with you than you could ever possibly imagine. He has an incredible plan for your life. 
The scripture tells us that if we resist the devil, he will flee from us. <laughs> Why don't we get that? Because how many times do we make statements like, man, I just, I can't get out of this. I can't stop. I know I should not be doing this, but I just keep going back. That's because you're double-minded. And you still need to turn your mourning and you need to turn your laughter into mourning. The only time I'm happy, man, the only time I'm happy is when I'm with the crew and we're, we're knocking some back and we get a little loose and we get, and that's, I'm happy. Yeah, well, that happiness is exactly what the Lord said. You need to turn that into misery. I, he says, I want to be the place that you get your peace from, you get your joy from. And my plan is not to knock you down and step on you like many, many people think. God says, my plan is to lift you high, higher than you can ever imagine going. So, I'm done. Listen. I'm going to close. I'm going I'm to read you a, a few verses, and I'm going to close with this. I want the worship team. You guys can go ahead and come up. His plan is so good for you. He wants to bless you. He wants to... He wants to enrich your life. So I want to I want to read this. I want to read this last verse. Listen. Verse 9 and 10. Lament, mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. So today, as we get ready to close out the service the way I told you we're going to. I want you to ask, I want you to ask yourself a few questions. What does my joy come from? If, if I were to really, Mark, if I were to pick in, if I were to plug in, if I were to do this, what's it going to cost me? I don't know. I don't know. I know what it's going to cost me. I mean, I don't know. Sometimes, I'm, sometimes I feel like it's important for us to... For me to be real transparent and real vulnerable and then sometimes I feel like people are looking at me wrong about it so I don't know if I'm wrong I'm just I'm sorry I don't mean to be but what's it gonna cost you I can tell you what it's gonna cost us what it's gonna cost us is a drastic change in what we thought we might do for a vacation this summer ultimately what it comes down to though is, is do I trust the Lord do I, do I do I trust the Lord does does that matter to the Lord does my pleasure matter to the Lord? I have to answer that question. Absolutely it matters to the Lord. And whether I get to go on a vacation now or I just get to vacation for the rest of eternity, He's got a plan for me. I, I'm, not, I'm not telling you to invest your, your vacation stuff unless you want to send me. Then you probably should. That's a joke. Seriously, whatever it is that He's wanting to set in front of you, it's not because he wants to hurt you. So here's how we're going to close out the service. These guys are going to play here in just a minute. What I want to ask you to do is as, a, as if you're by yourself, just, just kind of get alone. If you're with your family, I kind of want you to just huddle up around this card. And I want you to say, Lord God, would you show me what you want me to do? First of all, do, do, do I have a first fruits? Have I prepared a first fruits for you, Lord? Do I have something that you've put in my heart that you wanted me to bring together? Do I have that first fruits? If so, prepare that. If not, if you have this card, then get with your family and say, God, would you show us what your plan is for us? And then before you break, to come, to come, we're going to do just like we did. Somebody asked, a lot of people have asked me, why did you make us walk across the stage? Because we made you, and make sure you guys, make sure we, in fact, y'all scoop, y'all, I'm going to scoot this thing over. Will you guys set, scoot those buckets out? The reason, we, the reason we're asking you to do this and to engage like this is because we want it to be a, a, very, a very strong thing in your mind to say, hey, maybe I wasn't even, maybe I've never been a participant. Maybe you've been a very active, uh, I mean, a very active participant and you weren't a spectator. But the reason we're doing this is because we're going, hey, I'm not a spectator, man. I don't want to sit in the seat of someone to observe and watch what God's doing. I'm an active participant. And that's why we're walking across the stage like this. Someone said, hey, is that even right? Doesn't the scripture, stay with me. Doesn't the scripture say that when you give and you're giving, you shouldn't even let your right hand know what your left hand's doing? Study that. 
when the scripture says you shouldn't let your right hand know what your left hand's doing that would that would be like if we all knew that my brother here was in a time of need and if I were to get on my microphone and go hey don't worry about his need because I've got it taken care of I'm going to and it says it says in your giving as in in your charitable giving it says don't don't stand up but in your giving to the Lord listen to me and I, I we can sit down one-on-one -on -one and talk about it all you want I'll show you from the Old Testament to the new God never intended to close his eyes on your giving to the Lord what did Jesus and his disciples do with the widow that gave the two mites where were they standing they were standing in the temple watching not only the people give they were watching what they gave how did Jesus know she just gave two mites because they were watching what they gave and Jesus said to them look the rich people they gave out of their wealth but she gave out of her gut she gave all she had I'm saying to you the Lord's watching you he wants you to give from a place that you and him work out not from a place that I put on you I'm out on that but from what he puts on you so as you prepare that when you get ready we're not even going to do section by section we're just going to when you get ready you just make your way to that part of the stage come right across you put your first fruits in here and you also put your commitment cards in here you just put it all right in here and then you walk off the stage that way we're just going to see what the Lord wants to do so father right now we get together as a family we get together and we pray and we say God would you show us what you want us to do father I don't want this to be driven by me but God I know I know that in 10 years we're going to look back and go praise you God for the new Patricias, for the new Stevens, for the new Cody Lofinks that we've seen happen because of what you did in us praise you for that I am praising you right now for 10 years what we're going to say I'm praising you right now for what you're going to do in this time, this is an incredible church you've got big plans for us and we love you and bless you in Jesus name Amen, so when you get ready you stand to your feet let's just have everybody stand when you get ready you just make your way well we hope that this week's message blessed you if you want to stay up to date with things going on with the river follow us on Facebook but if this ministry has blessed you and you would like to sow into it, there's a couple ways to do that. One is you can download our River app, which is available on the iTunes Store and the Google Play Store. Or you can go to our website, www.theriverpanhandle.com, and give that way.